We're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Say hi, George. People are watching. Hi, George. <laughs> you got the two Georges today. Yeah. And um, we got a good show. We do. Yeah. We do. A really exciting show. Yeah. This show was inspired really by the people who commented and talked to us during last week's show who told us they wanted to know about some multi camera live streaming options mm -hmm. that were cost effective. Yeah, we yeah. got a number of comments both during the live part of the show and afterwards on the YouTube comments asking for more details about how to do this with simple, basic, inexpensive yeah. setups. Mm -hmm. So this week we thought we would tackle that one and try yeah. and give uh, some people some good options and, and alternatives to, to look at and hopefully fit every budget, I guess. That's the idea. I mean, you're on the front lines of support. You'd know better than anyone else. What, so do you see people who start off with a single camera and they want to go to multi-camera? Is that kind of a standard practice? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, uh, rite of passage for a live streamer? For sure. Uh, I mean, I think at this point we all know that a lot of people are going to start with live streaming using their smartphone and that's their single camera set up and then realize, okay, maybe I need right. some better zoom, some better focus, some better audio, and they start looking. And then once you do that, you're like, oh, well, now I want multiple cameras because mm -hmm. why not? And it's just going to mm -hmm. add to... So yeah, it, it escalates. Yes, I think it does. once people really get into it, um, it definitely escalates. We should do that here. We really we're running a one camera setup here. We should really yeah. be running a nine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why we get head cams. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good for this stuff when you got handiwork, but you just kind of look like a dork because you've got a head cam on right. the whole show. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so, there's a lot of our viewers. Elegant out there. head cam. Yeah. Footage is kind of hard, yeah. Yeah, some of our viewers out there use overhead cams when they're working on yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, we used to have one in our other studio. That was kind of neat. Yeah, yeah, it worked pretty well. Yeah, so George is on, uh, monitoring the comments yes. here, so Got let us know if you have questions. Going. Yeah, chat, comment, uh, like, subscribe, of course. Yes. And uh, I'm sure there will be some follow-up, as there often is after shows like this, some follow-up in our community forums as well. So check those yes. out. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, a number of the things we're talking about are already in the forums uh, that have been discussed. There's so a lot of crossover you there. You can definitely mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. things there. So right. let me show you the first setup. All right. Okay, so this is the setup. We're going to go give you start from the lowest budget setups to the highest budget setups. Maybe not the highest, higher. So is this where you presented and I shredded apart? Is that the... <laughs> Yeah, sure, we can do that. <laughs> right. Okay. You can actually All push right. stuff off the desk and get uh, mad yeah, too. Right. Okay. Uh, All right. So the first setup is you have your HDMI camera, obviously. And then you have a, a webcaster for your live stream. Mm -hmm. So this is your basic one camera setup. Well, the easiest way to add a single camera to this uh, setup, so you have your webcaster for your streaming to YouTube or Facebook and your HDMI camera, is you can bring in a USB cam. So yep. this is a cheap, what is this, $50 camera or something yeah, like that? Yeah, standard Microsoft Life Cam C920 or something along those lines. Yeah. Any any pretty standard web. I think you can get a C9, Logitech C920, which is like the most popular webcam out there. You can get that on sale on Amazon for like 50 bucks most yeah. days. It's, yeah, they're really cheap. cheap. I mean, the image quality is not great, but right. you can get a, a lot of people just want like a second camera angle, right. maybe for something specific. They have like like we're doing here. They might want a close up shot or yeah. something like that. So a webcam is good for that, right? Absolutely. Or, or even maybe the wider shot and use your HDMI as the zoom. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe your sure. your primary audio because the audio out of a webcam is generally always going to be pretty bad. Right. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely totally valid use cases for that. Again, yeah. depends on what your setup is. So I've got a basic diagram here on my computer, and you can see also the cost to we put together. Imagine you're starting from scratch, and you you have your webcaster, which is 300 bucks, your $200 HDMI camera, and you have a $50 web camera. So this is kind of your most bare bones, not the greatest cameras, but it gets you rolling, and you can yeah. do a two-camera setup. Uh, with webcaster, you can do switching from your USB cam to your HDMI cam. You can do some picture in picture. Yeah, so you um, just have to attach any kind of keyboard. We've got a little portable one here, which we like. This thing's awesome. Uh, they are great, <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a good uh, kit, or a good bit of kit for anybody, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, we with the, like a one button touch on this, I think it's the tab button or the, yeah. is it tab? Yeah, so there's there's tab, and then there's also numbers one through six. You can change the layouts for oh, side-by-side. Right. You can do picture-in-picture picture picture layouts picture. and stuff, yeah. Page up, page down when you're in picture-in-picture picture will change the transparency of the one that's overlaid a little bit. Okay, so okay. There's some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, you can there. have some fun with the two-camera um, setup, and it's the, cheap. This thing's yeah. about 10 bucks or 20 bucks. Yeah, or right? the nice part about this is that it's the keyboard and a touchpad built in with one wireless receiver.
receiver, which means so you, you can control that your everything on, USB on, on here. Webcaster just using this. It has a rechargeable battery built in, just charges over USB. Um, we bring this to all our trade shows now to do webcaster stuff because it's it's so easy. Yeah, it, yeah, so no, that's this great. is a great thing and it is very inexpensive yeah. for sure. So this is your bare bones two camera setup. Yep. Next up, let's say you want to get something a little more advanced other than your USB camera. So we'll mm -hmm. get rid of the USB cam. Yep. We bring in a second HDMI cam. So now we have our webcaster, our two HDMI cams. And still have our keyboard. Um, the downside here asleep. is that Webcaster only has one HDMI input. Well, let me tell you, George, we have a solution <laughs> just for you. <laughs> All right. You're in luck. Uh, this came up on the show last week, and our colleague Marta actually was the one who uh, brought it to our attention. This is a HDMI switch. Now, these are pretty common. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon has a gazillion of them. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, most of them don't work. Not all switches are created equal. Yeah. No. <laughs> so this one works beautifully because you can plug in your, you plug in your two HDMI sources, and on the front there's little buttons. So basically, I can toggle between them. Mm -hmm. I can also do the same kind of effects with picture and picture and side by side, side, by side and stuff yeah. like that if you want to get cute. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, what's nice about it is not so much the cuteness of side-by-side -side layouts. It's the fact that it switches properly with yes. no tearing, no latency, just nice, clean cuts yeah. when you expect them. Yeah. Perfect. And, and this one, this is the, I don't know if it even has a model number. But yeah, I wrote it down here. It's, it's called it's the, the... It's the Rave Sun or something like that. Rave Sun H HDMI 2x1 multi-viewer. Yep. With and there's the, a gazillion of these like Rave Sun things on there, so don't just yeah, assume yeah. you can Google Rev Sun Switch and get the right one. Like, yeah, no, we'll it's link the, to it. It's and the, the Switch, HDMI Switch with PIP is pretty much the way I find it every time. Yes. Um, now, I have bought other HDMI Switches with PIP. Here's one. This didn't work whatsoever. No. It had a horrible tearing. This one sucks. <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, we have a whole graveyard of them. Mar Marta so sent me some pictures. Um, some of the things we'll point out, and, and one of the things I often mention <clears throat> when I'm talking to customers um, and they're asking questions like this, I often find myself saying, you get what you pay for. This is 30 bucks. Yes. This is about 90, 100. Yeah. This one sucks and this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so is there a price difference there? Uh, yeah, absolutely, no question. But this is kind of a unicorn for a couple of reasons. There's not many, I don't know, this is the only one, like I showed, we've got four others here that we've tried, yeah. five if, if you count that one, and none of them seem to work properly. Lisa, you can yeah. pull up the, uh, and these display are display here, and you can see our some of our graveyard yeah. of ones that that didn't work. These are all generally less expensive than than the Rave Sun, I oh, think. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean that price isn't everything either. I've I've seen some other ones more expensive that aren't aren't really any good either. Um, I think the downside to this is um, audio. But there's so, there is a workaround. So yeah. maybe, we'll maybe explain what that downside is. Yes, yeah, so we were playing with this earlier, and with our two cameras, um, this doesn't mix audio between the HDMI inputs. Right, it cuts video it, and audio. Exactly, so we would be changing mics between our two cameras if we're taking audio from, from there right. through here, which may not be ideal, um, because only one of these is maybe set up for the prime location to get our best audio. Yeah, it's and kind so, of an unusual setup to have two cameras with two right. distinctive audio um, sources. But The good news is if you did want to do that, the audio switch was just as clean as the video switch. We yeah, basically saw as expected virtually no gap, which was mm -hmm. fantastic and also very rare for a yes. <laughs> switcher like that. Mm -hmm. So I think the workaround there is to then look at probably if you're doing this type of setup, bringing in audio separately from HDMI. Yeah, I made up some more of these beautiful diagrams to help illustrate. So this is your basic workflow here. It doesn't really get into the audio. Um, so then if you want to bring an audio, you might consider bringing it in separately from your video. Right. So something like George has a Blue Yeti here. Yeah. Any USB mic, no, I shouldn't say any, quite a number of USB mics should work well just coming straight into your, as long your as it's webcaster. A UAC device, right, um, which yes. is the same idea as a webcam being a UVC device. So one that doesn't require any drivers, no drivers or software to install. Very basic. The Blue Yeti does work great. We've used that quite mm -hmm. a lot. There's a number of others as well. Um, and then you can set your webcaster to choose, instead of using the audio from the switcher, 
you would choose the audio from your USB source. And obviously this is a desk microphone or you can mount them as well, if, but it's designed to kind of be right in your face. Well, but they um, do make, you know, all kinds of USB mics yeah. of all shapes and sizes. So. And there are other devices that you could take uh, an XLR mic and bring it in over USB as well. M Audio makes some, Focusrite makes some. Yeah, that's right. There's there's like that, little That's pushing our budget for this setup a little higher, but there are some options. There's also um Lisa, if you pull up the uh, display again here, we can see you can use something called a, actually, I think they called it a USB audio card. Yeah, it's basically and a USB The one here we've, we've been looking at is this uh, Sabrent, and it's like a $10 or $20 it's like dongle. Eight, it's like eight bucks on Amazon. It's oh, yeah. so cheap. We're in Canada, so everything's double. Yeah, yeah, it's at least 50 bucks here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, if you get that, then you can bring in any equipment that has a 3.5 millimeter uh, exactly. connectivity, so. Yeah. Um, you have workarounds for bringing audio into your webcaster, regardless of what kind of switcher or exactly. USB cameras you want to use. So we have a couple people in chat right now, you know, swearing by that that exact setup. So oh, the, the taking the feed yeah, from cool. their mixer. Yeah, we learned about this from a, yeah. one of our customers who yeah. told us about it. So exactly. Uh, please um, send us more of your your setups because that's how we learn about this stuff that actually works out in the field, not just in a studio like this. Yeah. So there are a couple questions here just before we jump into the next setup that I, I want to go through. Um, one of them from Marco, can you bring in a second camera via HDMI to USB uh, kind of capture card to the webcaster? Um, it is possible to do that. Some customers have done that. I would not recommend it as a second camera option. The reason for this is that the USB input on webcaster is only USB 2.0, which means if you're bringing oh, okay. in a full HD camera, you're not going to get the full frame rates you want. You're what not, about like 720 or? You're still not going to get, you're not going to get 30 FPS over it. USB 2. Okay. It's, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, if you were trying to do that to maybe bring in a different type of video content, maybe someone's PowerPoint slides sure, from where a where you computer, don't care quite much about how much where, was lower amount of data. Right, where 5 to 10 FPS is all you care about. Yeah. Sure, cool. no problem. But yeah. for two cameras, it would be better to do a, a switcher. And and I mean, this is l the same price as buying a USB capture card anyways. It was, it was less, actually. So yeah. you're, you know, you're better off, I think, that way. Yeah. Um, there's another question here. Can the webcaster access uh, other CDNs other than Facebook or YouTube? Um, they said specifically, let's say Vimeo. Um, it's a yes and no. Yes with Twitch, but no to Vimeo. Um, Webcaster specifically uses the APIs from those platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We've um, talked to the people at Vimeo, I know, and so it, it could come down a row, but right now right. it's a three-platform exactly. device. But there's a long list of people looking for it to connect to different platforms. So Most other CDNs use, I hope use custom RTMP, which yes. is not something Webcaster can do. Right. So. Any more, George? Um, no, I think that's it for, for now. Um, so some comments there. So I'm going to do another video on this switcher tomorrow. Just a quick demo, and I'll walk through how to set it up. Uh, so look for that. I think I'll try and get that up on YouTube tomorrow. So cool. Um, so the next setup, it's a bit we're going to gear shift. I think really changing because we're getting rid of this. We're getting rid of the webcaster. All right, get rid of the keyboard. Let's keep our two HDMI cameras. Let's say we want to stream these uh, and do some multi-camera switching. We could use two capture cards. Okay, so basically we've got each camera connected to a uh, capture card, and from this capture card, using the uh, USB out, you could bring that into your laptop. So I have another diagram showing that. This is a pretty standard workflow for anybody who's doing streaming over OBS or vMix or XSplit or anything like that, cast, where yeah. they bring in their cameras, e in cameras individually over USB into their computer. Now. Mm -hmm. I put the cost on here is twenty five hundred bucks. So just to break that down, we've got two cameras, dirt cheap cameras at two hundred bucks each. Yeah. We've got three hundred fifty dollar capture cards. Each one is three hundred fifty dollars. And you reminded me that we need a pretty decent computer to do this setup. Yeah, you can't do it with just any old, you know, five hundred dollar laptop. That's just that's just not going right. to cut it. One, you need to make sure that if you are doing a setup with multiple capture cards, that the host system has enough. USB bandwidth and enough USB ports that these are actually going to run at their full speed. So every one that I add, ideally, it, does, with, it get, does it get compounded? Like, does it just? Well, ideally, any USB capture card like AVIO um, is going to use 
pretty much all the bandwidth of a USB 3 controller by itself. Mm -hmm. So ideally, each one should be on its own controller. On a desktop, that's really easy. On a laptop, not always as easy. By a controller, for a dummy like me, does that simply mean a port in here? No, and that's okay. the challenge is that... How do you know how many controllers you have? Is it just you look in your... <laughs> yeah, pretty much you have to look at the hardware Got spec the, and the layout. Now on laptops, generally speaking, if the USB ports are on opposite sides of the system... That's a good sign for multiple controllers. Chances are they're, multi they're different <clears throat> controllers. However, they're also being shared with other devices built in. Your built-in webcam, your mouse, your keyboard. Got it. All, so we don't want to share that stuff. So and desktop, you, it's a lot easier because you just have a lot more ports. Yeah. So you can mix and match things to make it okay. work. But that sounds like there's a show in there talking about... Yeah, that one's... They, a, that I, one's specking a out a computer for multiple capture cards, but... Yeah, so but if I may go off script a little while you here, may. we could modify this by taking this away. Oh, and bringing right. that Rave Sun switcher back in. Right. We've now lightened the load. We could probably get away with a slightly lesser laptop. You still want something that's going to be able to encode, you know, 1080, 30, or 60 pretty decent. Yeah. So you probably want at least, you know, the most recent Intel i5 or an i7 CPU, most likely. Otherwise, who knows what, what kind of hiccups you could run into while running that encoding. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean there and then using whatever software you want. If we're talking budget conscious, using OBS is free, why not? Yeah, yeah, no, OBS is great. Um, and if you want to get fancy and bring in all kinds of other cool elements, you can try like VMX or Wirecast, but of course you're going to have another expense there, like uh, 500 bucks or exactly, 200 yeah. bucks. If or, you want, yeah, fancier software, yeah. there's a variety of reasons to, yeah. for those different things. But this is definitely a possibility. If you already own a laptop that's going to be good enough. Yeah, it's a quick way to get, then get rolling. Exactly. It, I'd say this, this setup would also require a little bit more technical know-how than something like a webcaster where you can be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because using whatever software, whether it's OBS or, or Wirecast, or certainly, all... certainly vMix, <laughs> yeah. um, there's a learning curve to those. Yeah. They're not that simple. No, they're not. Um, you know, the trade-off to that is they also are extremely powerful. Yeah. So some people are asking in chat about overlaying like sports scores or low That's, thirds. This is the solution for people who want overlays and right. interactions and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, you can do a similar kind of thing, well, if you have a, like a Perl or a dedicated appliance yes. with an RTMP, generic RTMP push, because you can push that up to some other kind of system that allows uh, overlays. Or build it in with images. There's a few different ways yeah. of, of doing that. Mm -hmm. But to answer one of the questions there is that, you know, no, Webcaster does not have a way of doing a, a lower thirds overlay for yeah. text or for scores or anything Yeah, it was like designed that. principally to be um, like the simplest, quickest way to get you rolling. Exactly. Not you necessarily need, the most advanced. Right. If you need a more complex thing like that, you might want to look at either a much bigger broadcast style switcher, which will do the lower thirds and, and things like, like that for you. Like the Rollins or something like that? The bigger Rollins or the Black Magic ATEMs, right. those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, you know, but then you're really not. You're in the budget, five we're and ten thousand dollar. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about pretty, okay. pretty significant. Um, I'm just going to look at a couple of the other ones. Sure. Uh, NHRA uh, D3 TV was asking, um, can we use the AVIO to bring in a VGA signal on the USB port? And yes, the AVIO HD uh, is a DVI-I input. It will capture DVI, so HDMI, it, it, it and VGA. ships with. If you buy one of these, you get it. Like it shows the DVI adapter here on the end, but in fact you get the adapters to connect a, you still get the adapters for that? We include a VGA, VGA to DVI cable, um, and then we have an okay. adapter for HDMI. And an adapter for HDMI, yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, we can absolutely capture a VGA signal with the AVIO HD, um, and, and yeah, and then bring it in over USB, mm -hmm. that, that's no problem. Yeah, I'm curious to know what you're trying to capture. We're, we're always wondering where the state of VGA is in the industry, and. They say it's dead, but... <laughs> but then you get questions like this, and you hear about it yeah. in projection halls and stuff like that, so... Exactly. Um, Richard Deacon was also asking, uh, he, he asked about the sports scores. He also asked, can it run on a battery? We've covered that in other episodes, and uh, you can run the webcaster off of a battery. Is that what he's, he's not talking about the capture card? Yeah. So with uh, webcaster, uh, it does take a 5-volt power supply. Um, and we have a lot of links in our forums, yeah. um, and we'll put them in the description, I guess, afterwards. But there's a specific barrel to USB cable we recommend. It's dirt cheap. And, uh, and, and some pretty Amazon. specific batteries that you can use. Five volt parts easy. It's the amperage that's the trick. So check out the forums. There's a bunch of conversation about yeah, that. Yeah, we've done it many times, gone out in the field, and it's fun. Yeah, and fraught exactly. with danger. Remember the one where it all went horribly wrong? Where it all went terribly, terribly yeah, wrong. Yeah, that was a good um, one. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should do that again. Um, another comment here, they use the AVI OHD with their Roland uh, V1 HD, and it's really neat. Glad That's a cool it. product, yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind playing with one of those. We don't have one here. I've, I've asked for one a couple times because I think it is the, the V1 looks really cool. The nice part about something like the V1, again, you're changing your budget a little bit. It's a $1,000 switcher. It's, yeah. it's not, you know, mm -hmm. but it could be put in front of anything we're talking about. One webcaster, caster, AVIO, whatever, and, and you're going to get all the flexibility that, yeah. that the Roland offers, which is a much more traditional broadcast style switcher to something like this so it's color buttons and t-bar mm -hmm. and the whole bit yeah exactly yeah. so if you're a broadcast guy that's yeah. that's probably what you want to go because yeah. it's going to be more familiar mm -hmm. um, questions yeah i'm just looking through here um let's see yeah so the question about vga um from nhra was uh the HDMI would be the video, VGA would be from the timing system. Um, so yeah, again, if you're from something like a timing system, if you're not particularly concerned about the uh, frame rate of it, then, and chances are VGA is gonna be a lower res anyways, mm -hmm. um, then yeah, uh, that, that shouldn't be yeah. an issue uh, on, uh, on Webcaster. Um, of the dog's media, VGA dead? No, presenters with older laptops and conference systems are still outfitted with VGA. Yeah, we hear about it all the time. You're absolutely right. Um, most business projectors, even new ones sold today, are still 1024 by 768 VGA based things. You know, I don't think VGA will ever be completely dead, but when we're talking about things like cameras and general broadcast style things, it definitely is, doesn't have the presence yeah. it used to. It's big in the business, um, business community where they don't really upgrade equipment. Exactly. And, and lecture halls for right. every 20 years or something like that, I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but it is generally a lower res application as yeah. well. Um, if you bring in the audio separately, would it be in sync with the video? Rocco was asking that. Um, oh, I guess he's, he means over the HG, well, either yeah. way. Yeah, webcaster. I mean, whether you're using a capture card or a webcaster, that is a potential risk um, that they might be out of sync. It really depends on how they're being routed and yeah, the cameras. We found, we found, we measured the audio coming out of our camera. We use a, this camera back here in the distance is a C100, so a very professional camera. And we actually measured the audio and video signals and found even they were slightly out of sync. So it seemed like every piece of gear we introduced uh, had a slightly different out of syncness to them. Uh, maybe not perceptible, but uh, so depending on what equipment you're running into with your audio equipment, you may find some sync issues. But inherently with the webcaster, we haven't seen any, or I haven't seen any audio sync issues where people have an audio feed that's out of sync with their video feed coming over USB or HDMI. Seems to be pretty consistently yeah. okay, but uh, you'll yeah, find out. Exactly, exactly. I'm just checking Facebook here. A lot of people waving, giving us the thumbs up. Nice. It's nice to get all this interactivity down. on this because yeah. it kind of makes the show go around. And also, uh, let us know what you think we should do next week because we're always looking for topics. Yeah. And this topic completely came out of last week's chat. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see another question here about the Navy IO from uh, 2014 that you've had. Um, email our support team, um, and with all the details of what you're seeing, we'll, we'll take it from there and, and see yeah. what we can do for you. Um, chat's not really the best place to serve you for that, so uh, s please reach out. This over is not email. the live support. <laughs> no, show? no, it isn't. We do have live chat on our website, but right. it's, it's not. Yeah. But yes, jump on live chat on our website or send us an email info at epifan.com. And that'd be and, cool. Uh, we could get all three support team, can, support can team guys here and do a live. Mm. Then support would be like closed for a while. I don't know if no, it'd be open. You just have to do it live. Yeah, <laughs> maybe um, not the best idea. Some people were asking about uh, a compatibility list or, or a tested list of cameras for webcaster, and other people have commented oh, yeah. that there is the list on the forums, and there is. We have a Google uh, a Google doc sheet that. Yeah, has, that's where I pulled a lot of the data from this yeah. show today. I wanted to make sure that the cameras I was looking into actually worked, so I went to our own list there and. I encourage you to add to the add your findings to the forum too, so we can get a big, even longer list. Uh, Martin Lopez is asking for three or four cameras. What do you recommend? At that point, that's when you're starting to talk about maybe a bigger system, where you have everything built in, like a Pearl Two, right? Or something like a Roland V1, which mm -hmm. I believe can do up. Do to you four. see people, many people, doing three and four camera setups with grabbers? 
No, because very few systems would handle that. So then you, you just have to get such a massive computer at that it, point. It's no it, point. Exactly. You, you your money you would use. be better spent yeah. on getting a switcher in front yeah. of a single capture card at that point. So that's kind of where we, we, we ended when we looked at all these different yeah. setups. These were the sort of the entry level setups, and we gradually move up to something like a Pearl Mini right. or a Pearl 2 where for a few thousand dollars you can get something exactly. that is a dedicated so appliance that's going to do We could take Pearl Mini, take away all these pieces, and here we have something where we can do our mixing, switching, custom mixing, yeah. images for branding, um, professional audio from pretty much anything, SDI inputs instead of just HDMI, which we've been talking about, yeah. recording at the same time built into it, uh, custom RTMP to any CDN you want. So yeah, the, you're, we're definitely stepping up another notch in the budget, but but I not think, far off from the from a grabber setup. If you have to buy, if you have to right. outsource a or source a uh, a higher end laptop, absolutely two thousand dollar laptop with a grabber, you're not that far off from exactly. what we're talking about here. So and and the nice part when you're looking at something like Pearl Mini is, you don't have to worry about. A computer that might get infected with viruses or Windows, you mean? or Windows doing an update or rebooting in the middle of your event. Yeah. Um, you'd be surprised how many times that actually happens. Um, it happened, I, I, remember earlier we were trying to set up this, yeah. we have this other Windows, I'm using a Mac right here, and we were trying to get it rolling, and right away, bam. Yeah, we were playing around with, with vMix, and in the middle of it, it's like, oh, updates. What, yeah. what are you? So, <laughs> so yeah, that, you know, that happens quite a bit. Um, so when you move to a dedicated appliance, you know, there's no question you are definitely moving up budget a little bit. Yeah. Not significantly yeah. when you actually break down the costs of a high-end laptop, capture cards, software like vMix at 500 plus thousand yeah. dollars. You know, then this doesn't seem so crazy because you're actually about the same price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can do two inputs, mixing, switching, everything like that, custom RTMP, whatever. So, you know, that's, it doesn't take much before you're at this level, really. Mm -hmm. um, so for all the stuff we're talking about in this show, we will put a bunch of links in the uh, in the post, in the YouTube post, and um, you'll be able to find all the stuff, especially that switcher, because I know some people are going to be asking about that. In fact, Ron is asking about that right now. Um, has anyone figured out how to control the Rave Sun? Uh, might be done over the mini USB port. We have not. <laughs> no, and there's a funny little port on here. Where'd it go? Did I somehow you have the Rave Sun one. What did I do with it? Oh, no, I do. Never mind. It? I'm oh, crazy. Okay. It has yeah. a little uh, There's a service, service port. Yeah, that's so who knows? what Ron's talking about. Yeah. And uh, and it might also have a, a, a controller, a remote control Yeah, so option. we haven't experimented with that yet. So right now, we've only played with the hard buttons, which I admit is clumsy. I don't love it. And they're loud. They're kind of clicky. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, it's not, any, it's not visual at all. So I don't know what's possible with that USB port. Um, you know, that's something we'd have to look at. Nice um, idea. And, and play with. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some other questions here. Um, can you mix in OBS and just encode with the webcaster? Um, there are ways to do that with any of the streaming software that we've kind of been yeah. touching on, OBS, Wirecast, vMix. Essentially, those can all send the output instead of an encoded output. They can send it to a HDMI output to a second monitor. Yeah, Which, we were experimenting with that yeah, before the you, show because we wanted to talk about bringing in some interactive elements into the show, yeah. like polling and this comment feed. We thought about maybe putting that into the show, so we thought maybe we'll bring that into uh, vMix or something like that, yeah. and then we'll output an it into Perl and bring it in there. So it is out the background, do all kinds of things. Yeah. So there's some opportunities there. Um, to be honest, I think it really depends on what your workflow is. It's got to really justify that. Otherwise, I'm not sure that serves you better than looking at a switcher that can offer some of the features you might use through software like OBS. Right. Um, and, and again, that totally depends on the budget and what you're looking at. Yeah. But Because um, you're then dealing with, you know, another capture card to bring in your camera to the laptop first and then do whatever yeah. overlays you're doing and mm -hmm. then back out. Mm -hmm. like, that just but if you have a whole broadcast system set up already, what we see is a lot of like news agencies and stuff like yeah. that where they have this very sophisticated... You just take that master feed. And they take that in. master feed and they just yeah. stick it into a webcaster and stream it up. So... Uh, yeah kind of a, at the nice tail end of your, your production line, but. Yeah, exactly. If I was building from scratch, I don't think I'd do it that way. I'd probably use a capture card instead. Right, exactly. So, so Hanking, uh, yeah, hopefully that, that helps answer, answer the question there. You, you know, it's definitely yeah. possible. Again, Webcaster will take an HDMI feed from basically anything that's outputting HDMI with 720 or 1080p. 
Uh, interlace not supported, but 720p yeah. or 1080p, doesn't really matter whether it's a laptop or a camera as long sure. as we're getting that, that signal. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely some possibilities to get creative there. Um, looking at a couple other questions here just while I dig through those. Issues. Sure. Well, we do have a couple events coming events coming up. Uh, on May 30th in San Francisco, we'll be at an event called Summit Live. Our colleague Victor is going to be there doing a bunch of workshops all about live streaming. So if you're interested in video marketing, uh, I should probably know a little bit more about this, but and maybe we'll report on it again closer to the end of the month. Uh, and if you're in the Bay Area, uh, look up Summit Live and see what we're doing there. And uh, maybe it's of interest to you. We're also going to be at Infocom, which is early June, June 8th, something like that. 6th to 8th. Yep. June 6th to 8th. Yep. Lovely time of year to go to Las Vegas. It is hot. Visit <laughs> Other George is going to be there. Yeah, I, I'll um, be there along with Sweating some in the stuff. booth. So come see us and play with all this stuff. And I think that's about it for all the events we've got coming up. Yeah, so uh, I'm just going to run through a couple of the questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, Daniel Wright saying, vMix has a setting to disable Windows updates while it's running. That's, hey, that's, cool. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a good thing to have. Um, Sean was asking, does Mini have an HDMI or SDI output? Uh, it does have an HDMI output. Uh, my colleague answered that in chat as well. So uh, you see that? Yes, yeah. you could take that HDMI out, either your, your program mix switch channel or an mm -hmm. input pass-through kind of thing. Yeah, we're doing it on today. We're using a Pearl 2. In fact, we're outputting all the way back. Behind George, there's a monitor <laughs> back here this kind of inception feel uh, uh, style thing. Um, Race TV was asking, uh, there's some cameras on the list that have interlaced output on HDMI. Will they work? For something like Pearl, Pearl 2, Pearl Mini, yeah, no problem. For Webcaster, no. Um, so most of that, that list, I think, has notes about, you know, is it recommended for Webcaster? Yes, no. Any camera that had, that outputs interlaced is definitely not. That only outputs interlaced. They're only, yes. Yeah. Some yeah. cameras will only do 1080i, but they'll do 720p. Yeah. Yeah. And we've tried to make sure that's noted in that, in that list. Um, mm -hmm. There's a ton of info there. So, yeah, if you look at those different columns, it, it should have that noted. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Francois was asking, video over USB to the Pearl Mini. Uh, no, Pearl Mini does not support a USB uh, source for video. Uh, that may change in the future, but at launch, it is not supported. It is on Pearl 2, yeah. uh, but it is not on Pearl Mini. Um, let's see. Some company can't order the Rave Sun on Amazon in Mexico, but it found it on eBay. Um, oh, sweet. This is a, yeah. I think this guy was looking for it last week and said he couldn't find it there, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's about a hundred bucks, I think, uh, is what we found it for, at least in Canada. In it's Canada, like it's a hundred bucks. It's 89 in the US on yeah. Amazon.com. Um, Which means it's actually cheaper in Canada. Right. <laughs> when has yeah. that happened? Never. <laughs> um, do you have a recommendation there for the next show? Can we experiment with those HDMI switchers and mixers? Um, yeah, it's, it's we tough talked to about do that on the fly. Today. It becomes such a mess of cables when we yeah. were experimenting with it that that's why George is going to do a separate video tomorrow on just this one. Yeah. And we might try to continue to do the little one-off videos that we'll post to YouTube. Yeah, if there's any ones that you specifically want us um, to show you or demo yeah. through, just put it in the chat here and we'll, we'll crank out another video. It's easy for us to set it up. I have it set up just like over here. But it was, like George said, cables everywhere. So. Yeah, it, it gets a little bit cumbersome. But we'll try and do those as standalone videos. It's a little easier one at yeah. a time that way. Um, after I was asking, which do we recommend if we want to stream RTSP or HLS? If we're talking about direct unicast streams where viewers are connecting directly to the encoder, that's Pearl Mini, Pearl 2, both can do RTSP or HLS direct connections. They do not publish that way to a CDN, but direct viewers can connect that way. Got it. Um, um, Dave commenting, uh, he ran his X2 for three and a half hours on a battery with no problem. Um, nice job, Dave. Yeah, he was also able to bring in a second camcorder into X2 over a USB capture device. Um, yeah, Dave, I'd like to hear more about that in terms of what your experience was with the frame rates, because it shouldn't be anywhere near as good as over HDMI. But uh, uh, yeah, but certainly share that in the in the forums. Um, you can find our community forums uh, just at the top of the page on ffn.com. Post any of that feedback. We love to read that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
think that's pretty much all the questions we have here at the moment. So, yeah, thanks for thanks um, for chiming in, everybody, on the chat. It kind of makes yeah, our show our job a lot great. easier. So, so definitely like, subscribe, follow, do all those you know socially internet mm -hmm. things, and uh, keep suggestions for shows coming. We definitely appreciate it. We love to explore these things for you guys and for ourselves because we always learn something. So yeah, I got to play all week with this stuff, so that's great. Yeah, exactly. We want to mm -hmm. learn as much for ourselves and and to bring that to you guys as much as yeah. possible. Um, you caught them up on all the news while I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, no, we're in great shape. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Um, so I think that, that pretty much does it for we're this done. week. Yeah. So Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a week. Thanks bye very bye. much. Bye now.